Well, hi everyone. Uh, thanks so much for joining me today for chapter 12 on modeling. Um, and it's a sad, um, sorry, I don't have like. Yeah, first, I think um, that, it's yeah. A, what is it? Is it our studio or what? Oh, sure. This is our studio cloud. So this is a cloud service for our studio. And um, I was like trying to figure out VS code and I just like, got myself like super super jumbled up and so um with our studio cloud like like i don't have to like set anything up and so it's really nice okay to just put a thank you over. yeah of course. Okay, um yeah and this is just a jupyter notebook in there um so anyway uh hello everybody thank you for joining me introduction to modeling libraries in python uh we're going to be using a bunch of packages today so let me just run that and so in the book uh, Wes mentioned that really you want to use um, different libraries based on the application that you're looking for, whether you're doing machine learning or regression or, or you know, depending on your aims and your data. And usually um, Pandas is more for the data loading and the cleaning. And then you switch over to whatever modeling library that you want for building a model. So Wes also mentioned like, oh, won't go super, super deep into it, but um, but this is, a, a, I thought, a really nice book introduction and what is possible with pandas and other libraries. And in the spirit of our group, I, um, uh, mm -hmm. I have a question. So, um, like in R, we can say pandas is something to deploy, but what about mm -hmm. NumPy? Do we have something like a close comparison NumPy? Because I know like in R, if you, before we go to modeling, we use the player to clean out everything. Um, mm -hmm. What about, what is this, I mean, NumPy in relation to R? Is there any something? No, right? Mm, welcome to other thoughts, but I can't think of like a direct comparison. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, so the data set that we're going to be using today is one that I, from Kaggle, which is life expectancy at birth. And in this case, I uh, read in the Excel, I dropped on ENAs, um, and then um, and I realized like later in the chapter, we talk about an A, so probably should have left them in, but that's, that's all right. And then I just uh, did a sample um, to make the data set a little bit smaller so that you know it wouldn't be so like the results wouldn't be so hard to read and uh yeah so and this is with a lot of help from a really nice Kaggle notebook that i found but reading in this excel sheet we see that we have the country country code the region the income group the year and the life expectancy uh also We'll be using this data set for all of the examples and so there are some cases where like it's a little bit um like it's nonsense the things that we're doing just to show like how to work with the functions and stuff like that so i just wanted to note that as well um okay and so in this case i'm going to pull out the the columns that are uh numeric just for an example so it's going to be in this uh cf underscore num. So now we just have year and life expectancy. And so in the book, he mentions that usually the point of contact between pandas and the other model uh, modeling libraries is uh, NumPy arrays. Um, yeah, and I wonder like if there's not an R equivalent because it already has like the structure that you need to be able to work with it. I, I'm really not sure. It, it does seem like there's like NumPy is also a really important link um, between like in Python to be able to use the data for other things, but but I'm not too familiar with it. Um, okay, so now we have DF num, which is just comprised of um, numeric columns. And so if we want to convert a, a data frame into a NumPy array, we can use two NumPy. So in this case, we're going to use it on uh, Oh, it should be on DF num. And so now we have converted that to a NumPy array. And I wanted to check to see if this was an ND array and just and like the answer is false. So we'll come back to that in a bit. But 
if anybody um, can explain, like, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. So this is just with numeric columns. Uh, we can also convert it back into a data frame. And hey, sorry, I should have. I'm using DSM. And then to do that, uh, we can uh, pass a 2D and pass a 2D and the array to NumPy. That is what this does. Apologies. Oh, I have too many columns. Uh, all right, I'm just going to bring it back to sample. Um, but in, in any case, this uh, this function call will convert a um, an, uh, an NumPy array back into a data frame. And I'll fix that before I put it in the book. And uh, one thing in the book that he mentions is that um, this is meant to be for homogeneous data, which is why we sampled only numeric columns. It's not meant to be for heterogeneous data. If you do convert uh, heterogeneous data from a data frame to, with, to NumPy, you will get an ND array as a result. So in this case, we're taking the whole sample, which if you remember has country, country code, year, et cetera, and then we convert it uh, with to NumPy and we get this array. When we run that same is instance, it should be true. Um, and I was wondering, like, uh, does anybody know why this one comes out as an, an ND array uh, with heterogeneous data versus this one that comes out as false uh, with homogeneous data? Hmm. I thought the other way around um, for me. I thought this right. one, I thought this one would be like NDRA. Um, I'm not sure why it's not MDRA. Um, yeah, right? I, I thought it would be the same, but um, yeah. Can you scroll up to see when you define DFNUM? Yeah. So in you DFNUM, didn't do, you see, yeah, yeah. You didn't, just, you, so the problem is you actually didn't change DFNUM. You just you called to uh, NumPy array, but you didn't reassign it. So I oh still, yeah. Yeah. Still a panda. Oh. No, below. You scroll down. When you, yeah. In five. There. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. you didn't oh, actually didn't... assign that to anything. Yeah. Ah, you... like this. <laughs> yeah. My bad. Oh, yes. thank you all so much. <laughs> really appreciate it. Um, still getting used to all this assignment stuff. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Okay. Check that out. That was one of the questions that I have. Thank you. And so back to our heterogeneous data. Uh, oh, real quick. Um, so up above, you may have noticed I selected some columns and then I ran to NumPy. You can actually do that all in one call, like using a lock, like so. Um, mm -hmm. Where do you get these numeric calls? Do you have numeric calls? Oh, yes, I should. Yes, up here. I define ah. numeric calls as okay, your okay, I see. life experience. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank, yeah. Thank you. I should have mentioned that. And then if you run this, uh, it will do both things at once as opposed to having it as two separate um, different calls, and like I did up above. And this is this recommended method of, of doing that. Yeah. So the question is um, given a data frame, why do we need to convert it to NumPy array? Is it because some modeling uh, stuff need the data to be in NumPy array? What, I mean, you know what I mean? That was my understanding that like NumPy arrays are the link between pandas and all of these other modeling libraries. Yeah. Uh, I'm yeah. not sure if there's like modeling libraries that are meant to be used with Panda output. Um, okay, yeah, because like for uh, scikit-learn, um, mm -hmm. um, you need to combine them to this um, NumPy array so that you give mm -hmm. it features and you know predictor. So you need to right. combine it to NumPy, NumPy array. Yeah, yeah. It just seems like part of the the Python modeling workflow. Mm -hmm. At least that's my yeah. understanding. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to talk about non-numeric columns, uh, so categorical data. 
And with categorical data, you can uh, use pandas to create dummy variables. And so uh, just for an example, in this case, first you create the dummy variables with get dummies up here. The second thing that you do is that you drop the original column that you use to, to create the dummy variables. And then you join the results here back into the, the uh, data frame. So running that, we get, uh, in this case, I use income group as a dummy variable. And so you can see here that it's been banded out at, with a one if that uh, country is considered um, part of that group. So Poland has a one for high income. For all the other groups, it's going to be marked as zero. So each row should only have one corresponding one for the, these dummy variables. But uh, in the book, he mentions that this might be error prone. And so uh, it might be more advisable to use the functions within the different modeling libraries um, as opposed to doing it with pandas and then trying to convert it over. Any questions or things to add on, on this first section? Okay. Cool. No, thank you. Okay, cool. Uh, so uh, now we're going to talk about Patsy, which is a Python a package that transforms arbitrary Python code. So it's, it's very, very flexible. It creates um, statistical models and it uses a syntax. It's probably familiar to folks who have used R before with this little tilde and then the term and the plus is not actually addition. It's just saying um, that you are modeling on those terms. And so as an example in our uh, data set, we want to um, predict the outcome given the predictors and we create a, uh, a design matrix which is what D matrices stand for from Patsy, and which are just NP arrays with, with uh, associated metadata. So here we're going to predict life expectancy and our predictors are income group, region, and year using our sample data. So I'm running this. And we can see our output. So first is an uh, outcome, which is going to be a design matrix that represents our outcome, which is life expectancy. And so we can see it here. And again, this is just an NC array with some metadata uh, like so. And then predictors is also a design matrix object. And it represents the combination of income, group, and year. And let me, oh, I have it down here. Um, and running in here. Yeah, the, it would have this number if it was the original data set, but I've been like selected just a sample. So we have 140 examples, 11 features, and those 11 features are going to make, be made up of the intercept, um, the income groups, and if you notice, they have been transformed into dummy variables by default. Um, the regions also, because they're categorical, marked as a categorical data and then the year uh, here. And then um, the terms are just written out in this metadata. And uh, that is what uh, these dummy variables are from like created using one hot encoding. And uh, generally to, to use dummy variables in machine learning or categorical data in machine learning algorithms you that you need to do um, some sort of dummification. I, I don't know if that's the word, but, um, and, as mentioned above, these are just arrays with metadata. You can just uh, look at just the, the, the variables like as an array as opposed to looking at it as a design matrix like above. And then up above, we also saw that uh, the intercept that comes with linear models is, is automatically added. If you don't want to add the intercept, then you can add a plus zero. To, um, to your equation, like so. And so, let's see x. 
So if you see here now, we don't have an intercept. And in addition, um, so dummy with the dummy variable, one of the levels is going to be dropped uh, also by default. And that I think that avoids collinearity and allows since I've uh, taken a stats course. So if I say anything incorrect, please let me know. So in this case, you see we have an intercept and then three of the income groups. And I think we're missing upper income. And then here we have all four and no intercept. And so this part I had a little bit of trouble with. So what the book says is that they can be passed, uh, Patsy objects can be passed directly to the algorithm. Like, and then here's an example from NumPy that uh, performs ordinarily squares. And uh, so what I understand is you can pass this object, it retains the metadata from Patsy. And it gives me this warning, <laughs> but I just, I'm going to choose to ignore it. Um, and then you can reattach it and with that metadata to obtain a series, which I'm not uh, quite sure what it is. And in any case, when I tried to run this, I uh, ran into an error. Um, if anybody knows what I am doing wrong, I, I really appreciate your advice. But in any case, like my takeaway from this section is like the Patsy object is kind of like pretty flexible in terms of the things that you can do with um, with other sorts of modeling libraries as well. Has anybody ever done anything like this? Is uh... um, not for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty pretty new. I might be that I just like. And interpreting this incorrectly as well. So, um, but yes, hopefully uh, that is also the takeaway that you that you got as well. And uh, a little bit more on Patsy that you can actually mix Python code with your Patsy formulas. Again, this is nonsensical, uh, but for example, if you wanted to round the life expectancy, you can just drop it into the equation itself. So you don't have to do it separately. And when you run it, you'll see that life expectancy or outcome is now rounded. And you could do it with uh, the predictors as well, which is the example that he has in the book. And uh, Patsy has functions for common variable transformations, and two of them are standardization and centering. So standardizing means you standardize it to mean zero and variance one. Centering is uh, you subtract the mean from the value, and you can do this um, within Patsy and, and, and the equation itself. So again, it isn't real, <laughs> but you, say we wanted to center year for whatever reason, uh, you can go ahead and do that uh, with Patsy itself. And um, you'll see that in the terms, they will say that the year is then. And so uh, on this like idea behind transformation, so usually you uh, you fit a model on say data set one, and then you evaluate the model on data set two, and you want to hold out some data because you need to use information from the first data set to transform the second data set. If you can imagine the meat, so if you just take the average, the average of the two data sets will be different because they're different data sets. And so uh, the function build design matrices from Patsy can actually um, uh, it's apply transformations to the second data set using the information from the first data set. And so in this case, we have again our formula like predicting life expectancy. I uh, created a new data frame. This is uh, the old data, uh, a complete different sample, but from the original data set. And then I can apply build design um, matrices using the design info from this first, uh, the first running of like the original sample, and then apply it to my new data frame. And then I have my new predictors, like so. Um, and then one. Uh, other thing uh, before we move on to categorical data is, as you mentioned above, this plus isn't actually for addition. If there are like two 
columns that you do want to add in your equation, you need to use the special I function. And again, this doesn't make sense. Just wanted to show that you can do it if you wanted to. <laughs> cool. Uh, any questions so far? Good. Cool. All right, so let's move on to uh, the categorical data. And so, like I mentioned above, categorical data are going to be converted to dummy variables by default, like so. I actually covered a bit of this already. If you don't want the, the intercept, you could add a plus zero. And now we will have all of our uh, categorical data as opposed to, um, to you know, n minus one of them and with an intercept. Question. Mm -hmm. Does it still leave out one of the levels for the region? It looks like it must, right? Is there how many regions are there? Can you region I'm not sure. I'm not sure if you can specify the intercepts. Two, three, four, five, six. six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh yes, it does. That's interesting. Uh, because otherwise you still have a collinearity problem when you had two variables for the base case, I guess is why. Oh, do you happen to know, does it just choose the first categorical data to? Oh, I don't know, let's swap them on your formula to find out. Oh, yeah, that's Can a you good question. Da, da, da. Okay, uh, please remember one, two, three, four income. Yeah. Oops. One, two, three. Oh yeah, there you go. That's what six, it did. Seven. Oh my gosh, that is really good to know. Um, yeah. We'll have all levels, but only for the first. Yeah, like variable data. Thank you. Yeah. Or variable. You were helpful. Thank you. I would have just breathed by that and not even noticed. <laughs> well, the book, book example only had one category of variable, so we didn't get to learn that from the book. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we of course. So uh, and, and then, we, so if you have a numeric column and you want to make it categorical, you can use the C function. And again, I'm so sorry for this example not being perfect, say you wanted to make gear categorical, uh, you can. <laughs> and then uh, finally, if you wanted to have interaction terms in your formula, you use a colon between the two variables that you want to. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Oh, so weird. Zoom just told me participants can now see your screen. I'm like, oh. I don't know what I've been showing you this entire time. Um, okay. Uh, so you can use colon uh, between the two variables that you want to show the interaction term. So in this case, we're going to do the interaction of income and income group and region. And uh, you will get all of the combinations of income group and region uh, in your in your predicting or your results, your design matrix. Ooh. So th that was Patsy. I quite like Patsy because it kind of looks like R. <laughs> so uh, another uh, package that we can use is called Stats Model, which fits many different kinds of models and tests, like ANOVA and Time Series. And uh, there are, um, well, why do I have this here? I'm just going to ignore that for now. Um, in any case, uh, there are two main interfaces with that model. And, I'll just here. and that's where they are, that's model.api and that's model formula API. And back to that section. It's just my habit. I like to have like all my imported stuff at the very top as opposed to throughout the the document, but maybe not for a book club, uh, not wise. Um, <laughs> but in any case, uh, so you can use SMOLS to fit ordinary least squares uh, linear regression. 
So I was, you know, very bent, uh, very intent on just using the same example throughout this entire uh, session. So I'm just going to go back to my original one and um, I'm going to use that MP array of predictors and put it in predictors org. Uh, I'm going to create a random number generator here. It's if so, but if you run this, they will uh, look the same, hopefully. And then there's uh, this function from the book that, uh, that if I understand correctly, like uh, returns uh, average and square root of the variance and then um, a uh, normal distribution of this, of these randomly generated numbers. So anyway, um, this part, like, there's something from the book that I did not create, but then I created like this uh, uh, this array of predictors from our original data set, and then put it back as an OP array. Um, this is what I understand epsilon, so really small numbers, uh, and then a beta, which represents the the true um, the true values for our predictors. And then, uh, and then we're going to predict the outcomes using um, the things that we just generated up above. Oof, that is a mouthful. I hope I understood that correctly. Um, and then this is what is up here that I should have probably just added it down here that this, um, you can also create a column for the intercept using SM add constant like so. I gotta remember this first. And then we can use SM OLS to create our linear, uh, ordinary least squares linear regression. So running that. And then uh, we can then fit the model and then print the results, which again might be a little bit similar as the workflow in R as well. And so uh, from our model, we can see you know, our R squared, which is 0.83, not, not terrible. Um, our F statistic as well. Uh, all of this using the stats model uh, package. Coefficients, standard error, et cetera. And so there are additional um, uh, sorts of results that you can get from a uh, stats model uh, formulas, I believe. Um, so like the parameters, P values, and you can also um, predict, uh, given your out of sample data, uh, like what the results would be given your model, like so. And if you had the true values for these results, you can actually compare them and see, you know, how how well you did in, in terms of um, your model. Okay, cool. Any questions on? This part. Okay. This part, I had a lot of questions on. This went totally over my head. It's probably my fault for missing book club last week. I apologize. <laughs> um, but this section of the book just kind of goes over how self models can also be used for time series analysis, where you can um, create a structure. This one, the, the one from the book, has two legs. You can fit it with more legs and then uh, get the results from uh, from your model. That was my takeaway. Uh, anybody have anything to add on, on this section? Because <laughs> that's a bit. Yeah, I, I just keep it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just I keep this if, time series. I think they, yeah, they just meant to show you some other things you can do. If you know about AR models, you'd be like, oh, cool. I need to be, I can use this for doing AR models. If you don't, then yeah, just skip it. And, Someday yeah. you'll have to do an AR model. You're like, oh, I know. How, yeah. I, I remember seeing that somewhere. <laughs> right? Yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, it's too lag. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what, what that means. Cool. Well, uh, for folks who are in time series, please feel free to go back to the section of the book. <laughs> um, so now, Sky Sky Kit Moon is another package, uh, very very widely used. Um, very common in machine learning and using Python. And so in uh, scikit-learn, you can create a test train, uh, uh, 
a split in order to um, you train your model on uh, part of your data, uh, you test what your model is from that test data, uh, or sorry, from that train data on a, another data set called test. And then um, you evaluate how it did, you know, with data that it didn't already have. So you can use the test, ah, sorry, train test split function to be able to um, do that with your data. And again, I dropped the NAs up above. So probably not a surprise, but uh, just one thing to note that you shouldn't have any missing values in your model when you're, um, when you're uh, doing this. And then uh, just uh, bringing it back to Patsy, Patsy can also do uh, use um, test train, that uh, train test split on uh, its, um, you know, it's it's metadata with uh, NP arrays as well, or NP arrays. And um, again, like the Kaggle notebook that I was checking out, also use squeeze, which if I recall correctly, it drops like a level from your data set. And so that's what this is. Uh, but just to note, Patsy is also another option for you if you wanna like continue that workflow that we had started in the beginning and onto this other part. Um, but say that we had had, mm -hmm. um, any questions? Um, yeah. So this Patsy, you do only data group, I mean, data division or what? What do you do here? Oh. Yeah. Um, well, this is the same Patsy as before. So it's using this uh, same sort of syntax and. Yeah, I see. I, okay. I, yeah, that you can do the test train, mm -hmm. um, same sort of like here, like I, I said, like, I want to, these are my oh, I get predictors. The, yeah, yeah okay. these are my outcomes. Yeah, you can just do oh, it. Okay. I get what you mean, yes, yes. Cool. Um, to say that you have had missing data, you can impute it. Uh, and then I know that we've chatted about that before um, using these different kinds of functions. And then uh, then we can use linear regression and fit our model on the terrain data set. And that tells us we did it. Uh, in this case, the book, the book example is a logistic regression and this is going to be a linear regression. Um, and then uh, okay. we can see our predictions and then our uh, predicted error. I don't know why I added it. Oh yes, yeah, this is our, our outcomes, right? And this again, if you had like the true values of your outcome, you can compare and see yeah. um, how well you did. In the book, he mentions um, uh, using cross validation. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, can you, yeah. Why do you use this hedge stack here and put this in purple? Oh. Oh, because I wanted, I think I was trying to see like if I could show an example of this and uh, Tuffle was just a little bit easier, um, but you don't have to do that. I think I was just playing around and I forgot to. Okay, okay. To print it <laughs> or to change mm -hmm. it. Yeah, I see. Um, yeah, so in the book, he mentions cost validation. And again, that kind of went over my head too long but i did want to like note this package that i found called yellow brick that does a really nice like visualization of your of your model results so in this case um the y are the real values the y hat is your predicted values um the dotted line is black dotted line is the fitted line and the gray is uh if your predicted values for the real value and yeah just kind of wanted to note that is like a really nice if, all you have to do is kind of pop your um, the functions that you just ran in here and get a nice chart. And at the end of the chapter, you see with uh, a bunch of other resources if you want to learn more about um, modeling and machine learning with Python after you know you've converted all your data with the pandas.
That's all I have. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, um, Isabel. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so while you were talking about, you know, um, BS, um, BS code, um, I was just saying like, oh, I'm really enjoying um, using the BS code. Like uh, I, I'm currently using like, um, you know, in some ways, um, uh, GitHub Copilot um, that you can use to just, you know, uh, let me see if I can share my screen. Uh, I cannot see my screen. I don't know why it's happening. <laughs> okay. Oh, really? Um, I'm right. not sure. Right? I don't okay. No, nope, okay. the yellow brick thing, by the way, is really cool. <laughs> how, do you, uh, how do you discover that? Oh, uh, thank you. Uh, it was this Kaggle notebook that, because I was like, I want to learn more about this oh, okay. modeling, and, and I never talked about it, so I thought it was pretty neat. <laughs> Can you see my screen? Oh, I was trying to share only VS Code, but I don't know. I kind of so like um, I'm using like um, you know, um, this um, uh, GitHub Copilot lab that can be used to you know, uh, um, you know, translate um, you know, code from one language to another. For example, here, like you know, I have Iris dataset, and you know, uh, with GitHub Copilot, I can say that I can ask question like this just. Select the five five rows of this data set. And now you can see it can, you know, do this um, automatically. It just give me the code, right? To select the first five data set, um, five rows with, using the language. Uh, so this is Quattro document and you can do that. Um, but also you can translate the code. So here you can see this is like, you know, our code. I want to translate it to any of these languages. So let me select Python. So when I say select, um, you can see it translate this Python to um, this R to Python. So this is, I thought it's really cool. And, you know, uh, sometimes you are writing R and uh, you want to translate some concept to Python. Um, you just go to uh, Stack Overflow, but this is really a shortcut that I think, yeah, is something really nice to show it. Yeah, so um, Isabel, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah. well, I mean, I, I can imagine it as a good learning tool, right? Like, you know, it's like, how do I do this in Python and just kind of getting used to the, the task yeah. is awesome. Yeah. So, like, now if I'm using, yeah, I write in R, I just, you know, highlight it and ask Python, uh, this, um, you know, GitHub Copilot. And yeah, GitHub Copilot is, you know, uh, I mean, uh, for me, like, it's paid now, but it's free for students. So, yeah, using oh. you know, yeah, both. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's okay. what we got today. Thank um, you so much. <laughs> next week, um, we're gonna have our final chapter. Um, yeah, using uh, you know, for data analysis. I think something like that. The chapter is the title of the chapter. Um, you know, data analysis example. So maybe we'll go through some kind of you know data analysis using all what we have learned, you know, looking and other stuff. All right. Thank you all for joining and um we see um next week. Thank you. See you next week. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.